Brisbane Guitar Amp and Vintage Show was two big days of crank guitars, howling amplifiers and music of all styles. I asked the organisers what inspired them to create the event. It just seems to me that if the guitar industry wants to survive, it's got to market itself. Because pretty much we're out there competing with the likes of Sony Playstations and computer games and DVDs and sitting watching TV and going to the beach and the footy. And all those people, they're organised. They, they market their computers and their video games. Whereas guitars, it's a wonderfully rewarding thing to do. It's the best friend you can have in life if you get into it. But the industry does very little to actually get out and say, hey, this is good fun, you should do it. So we just believe that we really just need to raise the profile and let people know this sort of thing's available to them and people will get into it because it's such a good thing to do. More than 6,000 visitors, 40 exhibitors, thousands of guitar products and an impressive lineup of Australian and international players combined to make the weekend a huge success. So let's take the tour, chat with a few exhibitors and check out some of the workshops. We're here with Michael Jago from Behringer, Australia. He's going to tell us about his new amps. Michael, how do we say it? We pronounce it Bulgara. So Bulgara is a new amp. It's only been on the market for about three months or so. Uh, it is really a price revolution because valve amplifiers have traditionally been cost prohibitive, you know, two, three thousand dollars plus. We've pretty much broken the thousand dollar price barrier for all valve. And we've got a range of uh, two series, the 62 series and the triple three series. And they basically have either EL34s or 6L6s valves in them with 12AX7s in the preamp. Wow. And, and how do they sound? Well, they sound tremendous. They're, uh, the two series are vastly different. The 62 series is very much a heavy rock amp, so a heavy rock with a really nice clean channel. The triple three series is really targeted more at your metal guys. It's a three series amplifier, but it really has a great diversity of tone. So even for the metal guys or the guys that actually want a heavy rock sound, it's a, it gives them a variance of tone, so it's nice. Yeah, well, this is sounding good down here. The boys seem to like them. Yeah. <laughs> so who, who else are playing them? Would it suit jazz and country players also? Well, for country guys, because the clean channel's great, in fact, on the 62 series, the clean has two sounds. It has a clean and a crunch. So the crunch is a real nice bluesy overdrive type of tone. So there's a nice variance for the guys that actually want a, a heavy distortion, but also want to change to a nice clean tone. And a lot of amps actually don't have that variation. So in this pr price point, we think it's pretty revolutionary. Steve, why vintage guitars? The first appeal was the sound, the playability, the feel, the quality of the guitars that were made in the 50s and 60s were very, very desired because of the quality of the instruments. But nowadays, it's, it's a, got a lot to do with the superannuation factor, the fact that uh, the Rob Report, uh, the Forbes magazine, the Wall Street Journal, and lots of other articles like the 42 Guitar Index has brought to light the amazing investment value of instruments and therefore there are a lot of people with superannuation into the market today driving the prices even higher. What have you got here with you today? Well Steve I have a fabulous 1956 original gold top and this is just just before the humbucking pickups came out in 1957. Of course it's still a very valuable guitar at $90,000 but had it had the humbucking pickups, the last one I found a home for about 350000 And of course it's conditioned. This one's showing a lot of age and a lot of wear. And of course the cleaner they are, the more valuable they are. But those sort of guitars go into collections and people really don't use them and play them and record with them. Where well, this is an ideal guitar for playing and recording. You can have your cake and eat it. You can play it, enjoy it and watch it grow in value. So how do they go up? Is it doubled every 10 years, like with houses? Well, in some cases it's much more. If you look at the 42 index graph and the graph comparison, in Forbes magazine, guitars have outperformed housing and stocks in most areas. So this guitar, let's say it's 90,000 now, 10 years ago, I probably would have had around about 3,000 on this guitar, where 20 years ago it would have been $1,000 or maybe... Uh, $800 and 30 years ago it might have been three or four hundred. 
what brands should people be looking for if they're, they're wanting to invest in the future? Well, I always go with the proven investments, things that you can draw your graph backwards and see how the guitars performed over time. So uh, a sure thing is normally the guitars that have that have been around at least 20 or 30 years in the marketplace. Of course there are going to be future collectibles made, but they're not normally guitars that are made by a present company that's going to make a limited run. It's normally a a guitar that they made 15,000 of them, but 10 million people want them. Not a guitar where they make a limited run of 100. It would have been easy to have spent all my time in the workshop room and just taken in the non-stop lineup of talented players performing and sharing their knowledge. The full list is too long to mention, but included international players like Kirk LaRange, Bo Jenkins, and Louis Shelton. Louis is the man behind the riffs of many 60s and 70s hits, including The Monkees, Seals and Croft, and The Jackson 5. Some of the Australian players included David Carr, Tim Gaze, Phil Emanuel, and Kevin Boric. Phil Emanuel from Seven National News here. We're live at the uh, at the Brisbane Guitar and Vintage Amp Expo. Talking with a young bloke here who's uh, come down from Mullaney High School. He's doing a guitar course up there. This is little Kevin. How, Hello, are, how are you going, Phil? How are you you doing? having a good time at the thing today, mate? Yeah, it's great. I'm just um, it's just noodles everywhere. Oh, yes, it's brilliant. Can you hear that? <laughs> it's really good because this is where Kevin and I get all our licks. We just wingle around there. No, yeah. we steal one or two licks off everyone and then go home and yeah, put them all That's together. Stealing. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of stealing, yeah. now you've got a you've got a pretty good gig coming up soon because I think I've got one on the same night up at Noosa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the 26th of 26th July. 26th of July at the Sheraton. Is you there? Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be Maybe me and Kevin are going to be doing a double guitar thing. At the Sheraton? At Sheraton at Noosa. That will be the first one. Yeah. But there are going to be others after, I can tell you. There will be some beauties after. Yeah. And, well, Kevin, I'll just get my cue sheet. I hope you are as excited as 1am. I, I mean, am, as I am. I am Sorry. so excited. I, am, I, am, I can see it. I mean, I, I'm Mate, it's going to be good fun. It's going to be good fun. Overcome, I think the word. Yeah. yeah. It'll be great to play with you, mate. It'll be great to play with you again, yeah, too, mate. Yeah. We've done it before. Bloody oath, and we'll yeah. do it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> I'll see you then, mate. Okay. Also on display were some very unique and unusual products. Picks made from agate and meteorites. Martin Ward showed us his innovative design for a tremolo system. And most unusual, guitars made from recycled materials. What we've got here is prototypes for a manufacturing system. The initial concept is guitars that can be built in a refugee camp. We're opening a workshop for homeless kids in Brisbane this year and these are the prototypes that I've made out of stuff that you can find in the bin in Brisbane. So uh, the bodies are chip oil cans, the wood is actually seasoned blue gum but you find it in the skips at renovation sites in Brisbane. The frets are fishing line. The, uh, the strings are standard strings. The tuners are bolts and wing nuts. So the, 
build cost of the guitar is about five dollars and I've come up with the lazy man's way of building a guitar which once you get into the hang of it you can knock these out about one every ten hours so what we're trying to do is set up a workshop for uh, street kids in Brisbane uh, orchestra of hard knocks if you will and get the the kids having instruments they made themselves that you can actually take out on the streets and that that are going to survive the experience. So far the show, the most popular thing has been the Roland Cube amplifiers. It's been absolutely nuts. Everyone loves how loud these little things are and the features they pack, all the great modulation effects, the drive sounds, and they really do sound so loud for something so small. Uh, we've also been talking a lot about the new GT10, which is very revolutionary in regards to multi-effects. Puts a whole lot of stuff right at the floor for you. So much you can do with such a high resolution processor, you know, like all the drive sounds and the cosm modeling. It's basically 30 years of boss know-how right in one of those things, so. And what's the cost, Jim? Uh, at the show we've been doing a nice special, retail price is $9.95. That's not too bad, really. You get everything in one box for that amount. Absolutely. As I said, 30 years of boss know-how in one multi-effects processor, and boss is the authentic and the original and they know how to do it. I spoke to Remco Mayer from Crossroad Guitars about his Flaxwood guitars made from reconstituted spruce. Um, this March I went to uh, Europe to the Music Master, which is like the biggest trade show in Europe as the NAMM show in America. And uh, yeah, I walked into this Finnish company called Flaxwood. They're really up in uh, North Finland, close to the Russian border, but it's freaking cold. And they came up with this new uh, way of building guitars. It's uh, made out of spruce, which is a classical tone wood for, uh, for acoustic guitars. They shred it into really small pieces, uh, and then they mix it with a binding material, and then it's mold injected. So the benefits out of this guitar is it's that it's, first of all, environmental friendly, because a spruce tree takes about 20 years to fully grow and then harvest it. Like instead of uh, mahogany, it takes about 60 years. Uh, then of all, uh, because it's um, one straight material, there's no grains in there that obstructs the vibration of tone. So like with a normal standard uh, Strat or a Les Paul, it takes about 50 years to really get the brilliant vintage tone what everybody's talking about out of the guitar. With this guitar, you only have to wait till the, till the lacquer is dry, you can pick it up and you got the vintage tone out of it already. You got a really brilliant resonance out of it, brilliant tone out of it. And the whole guitar is made out of the flexwood material, like with a resonator back of it. And the neck is it's a set neck out of the flexwood material. It comes with a truss rod, but you don't need it. It's only when you uh, change the gauge of your strings, you have to adjust it. I hear you got a couple of uh, endorsees that you're uh, quite excited about too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Kim Lech, uh, the sales guy from Flexwood, came to me when we were talking about it. He said, Man, we got this endorsee already in uh, Melbourne called David Edwin Carr. He's a producer and guitar player. And he uh, already is endorsed by Flexwood. Do you mind? He said, oh, no. So David's going to be our uh, endorsee in Melbourne. Then at the guitar competition that I organized last year together with Australian Guitar Magazine, we found uh, the little man there, uh, Jimmy Lightner Brown, who I think is a freak on the guitar. Um, I think soon the couples will pick him up by playing too many notes a minute. Um, but he probably ends up in jail for that. And then uh, our local guy, uh, Phil Yates, he runs his own music school and yeah, he's like the godfather of Shred here in, uh, in Brisbane. And he also plays blues or finger picking or whatever you want.
and uh, this looks like Mission Control. Was it involved with the latest Mars mission? Uh, it might have been, mate, but as far as I know, it wasn't. <laughs> it's an interesting uh, story, actually. TC itself is a very interesting company. They uh, started back in the 70s with a couple of guitar stomp boxes, one of which is still on the market today, still widely accepted, you know. They had then a lot of luck in the studio and broadcast market, so you'll now find these days, if you talk to anyone in sort of the high-end studio area or anyone that's even in radio or TV broadcast, they know it very well. Uh, that was very successful for a long time, but uh, recently they thought well, it's time we went back to our roots. So that's basically where all this has come from now. So the G system, which as you said, does wouldn't look out of place in the uh, in the Mars mission, is uh, is basically the full blown effects unit. So you get all your multi effects in there, be it delays, reverbs, all the modulation family, the pitch stuff. But it's also a control surface. So I can have external pedals running in, which I've got here now, which are connected, powered by the G system, and controlled by the G system. So in effect, it becomes a central part of your rig. You don't need anything else on stage with you, just that, and away you go. Now, is it difficult to negotiate? No, one of the good things about TC is the fact that they keep their menu structures very similar and very simple to use. Whereas with the G system, it's basically the use of five buttons. So if I want to go in and edit, I press the edit button and all my controls are here. What I want to change is all along the top row. Uh, if you want to get something that's a lot more involved in how you can shape a sound, they do that as well in the rack mount units like the G-Force. Now that goes really heavily into the parameters and the routing, so if you want to spend days shaping a sound, you can using that one. After the success of the G-System is decided what we'll do is then piecemeal parts out and provide them in an individual stomp box. So they now offer the Nova range in which you've got a reverb, delay, a modulation and a dynamics. So if you just need one part of the puzzle, then you can now get it that way as well. The 2008 Guitar Amp and Vintage Show was impressive. The organisation of the event was very slick, the displays first class with plenty of new and vintage product and there were some great deals available for the big numbers that attended. It's just gone so well, it's been ridiculous. We've had probably getting close to, you know, six and a half, seven thousand people through the doors. Um, so it's great yeah. exposure for the guitar. Fabulous to see that people are still into playing guitar. Making yeah. music, and that's what this is all about, is getting people excited about guitars and making music. Hopefully we will see this show on the road in other Australian capital cities soon. Regardless, it'll certainly be worth the trip to Brisbane in May next year for what we believe will be an even bigger guitar event.